Hello GRE lovers. I hope all of you are fine. Today we are going to start triangle. And this video will hopefully cover all of the relevant concepts which you could be asked in the actual exam. Starting with the triangle, first of all just have a quick overview about the polygon. Though we'll discuss the polygon a bit later, but now just have a quick overview. A polygon is a two-dimensional geometrical figure formed from three or more line segments. And the line segment of polygon are known as sides or edges. And the point where these edges meet is known as vertex or a corner. So if polygon have three sides, that will be triangle. If that is four side, that will be quadrilateral. For five side, pentagon. For six side, hexagon. For seven side, heptagon. And for eight side, octagon. These are the common types of polygons which you could be asked we will discuss the other polygons in detail, but for time being, let's quickly move to the triangle. So what exactly is a triangle? Triangle is a polygon with three sides, three angles, and three vertices. So there are three sides, and at the connection, there will be angle and a vertex. And the sum of angles in the polygon is equal to n minus 2 into 180, where n is the number of sides of polygon. And if we ask about the triangle, for triangle the number of sides is 3. That's why the total sum of angle in a triangle is equal to 1 degree. Now let's talk about some common terminologies which you will see as you move further in triangles. First one is altitude. That sometimes may be known as the height of triangle. There is a perpendicular drawn from the vertex of triangle to the opposite side. For example, if I if we have a triangle ABC, so if we consider the vertex A, so in that scenario, this AD will be the altitude or the height of triangle with respect to the side BC, and this is a perpendicular distance. And if I consider the vertex B, this BE will be the perpendicular distance from vertex B to AC and AC is considered base in this scenario and if I consider the, vert the vertex C, so CF is the perpendicular distance from vertex C to the base AB. Okay. So next thing is median. What exactly is a median? A median is a line segment drawn from the vertex of a triangle to the midpoint of the opposite side. So basically median bisects the side so for example, if I consider the vertex A, if I draw a median from vertex A to the side BC, that will bisect the side BC into two equal parts, BD and CD. Both of its sides are equal now. Now if I consider the vertex B, so that's mean AE will be equal to EC. And now if I consider the vertex C, that's mean AF is equal to BF. So the median is actually bisecting each of the side of triangle from the line drawn from the opposite vertex. And the third common term which you will see along that is angle bisector. As the name itself states that we are bisecting the angle into two equal parts. So the line segment drawn from the vertex of triangle to the opposite side that divides the angle into two equal angles or parts. Again considering the same triangle ABC, if I consider the vertex A and draw the angle bisector so the angle at A is bisected into two portions, two equal portions. If I consider the vertex B, now the angle B is divide, the, divided into two portions and if I s consider the vertex C, now angle at C is divided into two equal portions. So these are the three common terms which you will see. First thing is the altitude or height of a triangle. The second one is the median and a third one is the angle bisector. Now let's move to the next part which is the area of triangle. So what is it is area? That is a region that is bound enclosed or bounded by three sides of triangle. So the formula for finding the area is base into height divided by 2. We just need base and height. Height is always the perpendicular distance from opposite vertices to date base which you are considering. For example, if I am considering this triangle ABC and if I consider 
BC as base. In that scenario, this AD will be the height of triangle that will be the perpendicular drawn from the vertex A to this base BC. So the area will be BC into AD divided by 2. If I consider AC as base now, so in that scenario, height will be this BE perpendicular distance from vertex B to the base AC. So the area will be AC into BE divided by 2. And if I consider this AB as base now, so in that scenario, height will be CF, which is perpendicular distance from vertex C to the base AB. And if I combine all of these three, so the area will be for the first scenario, considering BC as base, that will be BC into AD over 2. And if I consider AC, over, AC as base, so AD will be AC into BE over 2. And if I consider AB as base, so that will be AB into CF over 2. And all of these are equal. So area, you can find area from any of the base, but remember for height, you need to, perp you need to take the perpendicular distance with respect to that base. Now the next thing is the parameter of triangle. That is the total length of the boundary or we can say the sum of the lengths of three sides. Again if we consider this triangle, so the parameter will be the sum of all of the sides AB plus BC plus AC. Now the next thing is the exterior angle of triangle. First of all, if we consider a triangle if we consider this triangle uh, having angle A, B and C, these three A, B, C angles are integer angles and the sum of these angles are equal to 1 degree as we discussed earlier. So if we talk about an exterior angle, for example, if I consider this angle and let's call this as X. So this exterior angle must be equal to the sum of opposite two interior angles. Now let's discuss this, that each exterior angle of triangle is equal to the sum of two opposite interior angles. If I consider this ABC triangle now with smaller ABC as the angles inside and these three are interior angles and the sum of these angles is equal to 180 degree. So A plus B plus C is equal to 180 degree. Now if I consider these three exterior angles x, y and z. First of all, as we discussed in the line angle concept, the total angle on a one side of straight line is equal to 180 degree. That means this x plus a must be equal to 180 degree. So for finding the value of a, that will be 180 minus x. If I substitute this value of a in, the, in this equation, so in that way, uh, that will be 180 minus x plus a plus b plus c is equal to 180 degree. So x will be equal to b plus c. So this x which is this exterior angle is equal to the sum of opposite two interior angles. Likewise for this y the exterior angle must be equal to the sum of the opposite two interior angles which are a and c and for this angle z exterior angle that must be equal to the sum of the opposite two interior angles which are A and B. So as we discussed earlier, the sum of integer angles is equal to 180 degree. So what about the sum of exterior angles? So sum of exterior angles is always equal to 360 degree. Doesn't matter what are the total sides of polygon, you will always uh, know that the sum of exterior angles of a polygon is always equal to 360 degree. And this property is very much helpful uh, for finding the angles in the polygon with higher number of sides. And we can prove this if we just add this 1, 2 and 3. So that will be x plus y plus z is equal to twice of a plus b plus c. As we know this is 1 degree. So multiplying this, this will be 360 degree. Okay. Now next property is very much important that is triangle inequality and this is helpful in the scenario in which we know the two sides of triangle the length of two sides of triangle 
and we can find the th length of third side of triangle and for example what exactly this property is saying that any side of triangle must be first thing greater than the absolute difference of other two sides and less than the sum of other two sides so to discuss this consider triangle abc first of all if i consider a side ab this must be greater than the absolute difference of other two side and less than the sum of other two side because this is absolute value this will this answer can't be negative because this is a distance and likewise this uh, if i just shuffle these values and the result will be same absolute of bc minus ac same as absolute of ac minus bc and if i consider the sign the side bc bc is greater than the absolute difference of other two side ab and ac and less than the sum of these two sides and likewise if i shuffle this and for the ac side this is greater than the difference of ab and bc and less than the sum of ab and bc now if i want to use this property if i consider a triangle 3 4 and 5 so let's test this property first of all this 3 first one must be greater than the absolute difference of other two side so that is 5 minus 4 which is equal to 1 and 5 plus 4 which is equal to 9 so 3 is greater than 1 and less than 9 so this is right if we talk about 4 4 is greater than the difference of other two sides and less than the sum of other two side yes this is again true and the last thing is 5 5 must be greater than difference of other two which is 4 minus 3 and less than the sum of other two which is 4 plus 3 this is again possible so that's mean this triangle with the length of these three sides are, are is possible so in most of the time uh, in this uh, type of question usually in the quantitative comparison question quantitative comparison question we are provided with the two sides and the examiner call the in exam the third side is called as some variable and we are asked to find the value of that so based on this we can find the range of the value of that but in some scenario we are provided with a constraint that the triangle is a right angle triangle or the triangle is acute angle triangle or the triangle is obtuse angle triangle so in that scenario there are some restrictions we will see further what are those restrictions otherwise if that is a generic case for example we know that two sides of triangle are 4 and 7 so third if i call third side as x so x will be greater than difference of 2 which is 3 and less than the sum of 2 which is 11 so x could be any value which is greater than 3 and less than 11 okay now the next important thing is that the side opposite to the longest largest angle in is the longest side in the triangle so what that mean if i have a triangle with angles capital a b c and the sides corresponding to those angles the opposite side of those angles are smaller uh, uh, capital uh, letters a b c and for the capital angle with the capital letter a the opposite side is a smaller uh, the side length is a smaller letter a likewise for b and c and if i am giving a constraint that this angle a is greater than angle b which is greater than angle c based on that i can say that because angle a is the greatest that's why this side a is greatest and angle b is second greatest that's why this side is b in order and the last side with the least length will be uh, will have length c that's why this a is greater than b and b is greater than c now the next thing is the types of triangle so there are two uh, types of triangle based on two criteria first thing is by angles and second thing is by sides by angle there are three triangles right angle triangle acute angle triangle and obtuse angle triangle and based on sides there are three angles equilateral triangle isosceles triangle and scalene triangle first of all let's discuss the right angle triangle so in right angle triangle as we all may know that 
in which one of the angle of a triangle is 90 degree. That will be right angle triangle. And if I consider this in which uh, B, A and B are usually known as the legs and this sign present a 90 degree and the side opposite to this is hypotenuse. So there is a Pythagoras theorem that says that the sum of the squares of legs must be equal to the sum uh, the square of the hypotenuse. So A square plus B square is equal to C square and A, B are two legs and C is a hypotenuse. Now there are four common Pythagoras triplets which every GRE student must remember. Those are 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 8, 15 and 17 and 7, 24, 25. More or less, if you will see question regarding the right angle triangle, those are, uh, revolve around these four common Pythagoras triplets. And you can make several uh, triplets based on that. For example, we know that 3, 4, 5 triplet, that this is 3, this is 4, so this one must be 5. You can prove that this by this Pythagoras theorem, that 3 square plus 4 square must be equal to 5 square. Now, we can also write this as, because this is triplet, if I multiply whole of this by 2, so I can say that this is 6, this is 8, and this is 10. So, in exam, you will see the forms of these triplets, these four triplets, C45, 512, 13, 8, 15, 17, and 7, 24, 25. So you should remember these four triplets. First of these two triplets are very much common and the last two are a bit rare, but you should remember these four triplets if you want to perform well on triangles. The next, let's see the special cases for right angle triangle. The first one is the isosceles right angle triangle that it is a 45 45 and 90 degree triangle so we have a triangle 45 45 and 90 angle as the these two angles are equal that's why the side opposite to these angles are equal and what is it is a ratio of these that is x ratio x ratio x under root 2 so if you want to prove that i can do that so, for example, this is A and this is also A because both of these sides are equal. So, what will be this thing? Based on the Pythagoras theorem, A square plus A square will be equal to, let's call this as X for time being. So, A square plus A square is equal to X square. So, 2A square is equal to X square. X, by taking the square root on both sides, this will be A under root 2. So we got a, a and a under root 2. And exactly if you see this is x, x and x under root 2. In exam, this question could be asked that they provide you the value of any of these. Maybe the questions exam uh, say that in front of 90 degree, you have 2 under root 2. So just equate 2 under root to this thing. So x under root 2 is equal to 2 under root 2. So x will be equal to 2. Now we can find this as 2, this as 2, and this as uh, 2 under root 2. Okay, the next common uh, special case is 30, 69, 60, and 90 degree. So we have a triangle 30 degree, 60 degree, and 90 degree. So the ratio for this is x, x under root 3, and 2x. So this is x, this is x under root 3 and this is 2x. So if you know the value of any of these, you can find the remaining 2 from that. For example, if this is 6 under root 3, that's mean x under root 3 is equal to 6 under root 3 and that's mean x is equal to 6. So this is 6, this is 6 under root 3 and this is equal to 12. Okay. Now this is the very much rare type of special case but the question relevant to this could be solved by other method by splitting the angles but it is worth to remember this that in 15 75 and 90 degree the ratios are under root 3 minus 1 whole uh, bracket x for 15 degree for 75 in front of 75 this is under root 3 plus 1x 
and in front of 90 that degree that is 2 under root 3 2 under root 2x so based on that you can find any uh, remaining two values if you know the one value and for example if the exa if in the question we are given that this thing is equal to 4 under root 2 so that's mean 2 under root 2 x is equal to 4 under root 2 so that's mean x will be equal to 2 now we know the x we can find the remaining two sides and based on that we can find the parameter area or whatever the condition provided with okay and this is one question that this is 2 under root 2 x under root 3 minus 1 whole x under root 3 plus 1 whole x and under root 2 uh, 2 under root 2 whole x now next thing is about the acute angle triangle so in acute angle triangle all of the angles of a triangle are less than 90 degree and just like in this triangle with sides a b and c length and smaller a b c are the angles the sum of all the all of the angles a b and c are less than 90 degree and this is a very important property to understand this let's consider this way as in the case of a right angle triangle if this is a this is b this is c based on the pythagoras theorem this is a square plus b square is equal to c square but if this is twisted a bit and this angle is less than 90 and this is greater than the remaining two angles for example this is uh, opposite to this is we have c and this a and this is b so based on that a square plus b square c square now this thing will be greater than that square so that is written here that greatest side square must be less than the sum of square of other two sides just like in this if i consider angle a is greatest so that's why greatest side will be having length a and uh, after that the side greater length will be angle b and after that angle uh, after that the length c so based on that the sum of the square of b and c must be greater than the square of a so the greatest side square is less than the sum of square of other two sides and the last one based on angle is obtuse angle triangle when one of the angle of triangle is greater than 90 and there could be only one angle because the sum is equal to 1 degree and if there is if you exceed 90 degree once so in that scenario the angle will be exceed the 1 degree which is not possible so there could be only one angle that is greater than 90 degree and uh, in this scenario uh, smaller abc are angles and greater abc are sides and uh, to understand this consider that this angle is greatest and from the rest to this is greater than 90 degree so the side opposite to this square c square must be greater than the sum of other two squares a squares plus b square which is c square is greater than a square plus b square so first of all in the right angle triangle just quickly revise the right angle triangle uh, this is a this is b this is c so that is a square plus b square is equal to c square in the acute angle triangle if this is the greatest angle so this is a c a and b so that's mean c square is less than a square plus b square and in this scenario in which the c is the angle greater than 90 degree so in this scenario this c square is greater than a square plus b square so these are three uh, important thing which you should remember and it is love to ask this question again and again and in such question please pay attention to the words obtuse angle acute angle or the right angle now the sides of the types of triangle based on the sides so first one is equilateral triangle so in that when all of the sides have equal length and as all the sides are equal that's mean all of the angles are equal 
all angle sums to 180 degree that means each angle is 60 degree so we have a triangle with all of the angles capital X and all of the sides are X so you should remember two three formulas for this what is the area area will be square root 3 divided by 4 into side square and in this range your side is equal to X what is the height height is under root 3 by 2 into side and the parameter is thrice of this length x. We can find area and height using the angles, bisectors and the altitude but the quick way is just quickly use this formula and find the area and height of equilateral triangle. Now let's understand some important properties for equilateral triangle. That altitude, median and angle bisector from the same vertex always overlap. What that mean? That means that if I draw the altitude, median or angle bisector from this vertex to this side, that will always be same. So the same one is the angle bisector, is the height of the triangle or altitude and the median as well. Likewise, if I draw from this vertex to this side, so that will again be the median, altitude and angle bisector. And if I draw from this vertex to this side, that will again be the angle bisector, median and height at the same time. So the property is written then for uh, each altitude, median and angle bisector from the same vertex always overlap. And based on this, you can see that there are six triangles, one, two, three, four, five, and six. These are equal triangles. And uh, if we know the total area of triangle, you can divide that by six to find the area of such single triangle. And if you know the any of this area of any of this triangle, just multiply that by six to find the total area of equilateral triangle. So this property is very much important as we move further once we are done with the circles we will see in the mixed geometry that how we can inscribe a circle in this how this can be inscribed in the circle and how can the quadrilateral can be inscribed in this so for that you need to understand this property of altitude and median and angle bisector okay so the next triangle based on the side is isosceles triangle so in isosceles triangle two sides are of same length and third side is different length as two sides are same that means two angles are same so we have a consider a triangle in which these two angles are same these two sides are same and this third side and angle is different now there is one common type of question which is asked regarding the sources triangle that for example uh, this is equal to 5 5 and 6 and we are asked to find the area of this triangle just pause this video for a while and try to solve this at your own that how you can find the area of this okay I believe all of you have done that now first to understand this first of all see some properties of this associated triangle you don't need to remember any formula to find the area of this triangle let's see how so if I draw the if I consider this BC side as a base and which is the unequal side because rest a b and a c are equal side if i consider this b c as unequal side uh, as equal side is base so in that scenario if i draw the median or altitude or angle bisector from the vertex opposite to the unequal side to the unequal side that will overlap so this a uh, this uh, altitude median or uh, this is the altitude as well as the median as well as the angle bisector So this is a 90 degree this bisect these two sides and this divide the Angle into two equal parts So this property is tested a lot to find the area. Let's see how if I consider the same triangle with 5 5 and 6 if I want to find the area of this how can I do that if I draw the perpendicular altitude from this to this side so that will bisect the side as well as well as the angle so if I bisect this this means this is 3 this is 3 and if you see this closely 
is in this uh, it is a 90 degree so this will be 3 4 5 triplet you can also prove that by the pythagoras theorem but it's better to remember the triplets so this is 4 now how can i find the uh, the area if i consider this as base this is 6 i know the height which is 4 so the area will be 6 into 4 divided by 2 which is equal to 12 so based on this property you can find the area of any sort of isosceles triangle and in exam uh, there were another concept tested that search finding the area uh, in this scenario we are provided with the constants but they could provide the ask give you the final area but provide you the variable in this scenario so using the same concept whatever the variable is draw the perpendicular bisector in this side that altitude that altitude the angle bisector and median it will divide the side into two parts and based on that you can just find the value of the variable as you already know the area of that and the last one is a scalene triangle as the state said all of the sides are different that's mean all of the angles are different now we know all of the sides are di different all of the angles are different so to find the area in this is a bit difficult most of the time in exam we provide with such scenario like for example that we know this side we know this side we know this side we need to find the area so you can find this there almost some uh, sort of shortcut in this most of the time you can draw the perpendicular from this to this side and you know this in 90 degree you know this angle this angle based on that you can find this height and this is the base you can find the area but in some scenario it is difficult and at the time constraint is uh, very difficult to find the area so in that scenario you can use the hero formula and hero formula this is basically on the whole side states that the area will be the square root of x into s minus x s minus y and s minus z where x y and z are the sides of triangle and what exactly is s s is the half of the parameter and parameter is x plus y plus z so divide that by two you can find x s and you can use that to find the area so you can use this in the last resort in which you are not getting the enough uh, you not not have enough time to find the area using any other technique so you can use this otherwise in most of the question you can solve and find the area without this formula okay now there are some special considerations and you will see such question relevant to these in the harder section and you don't need to know the proof of these you just need just remember these and try to implement this the so first thing is if we are given a scenario that we have a fixed parameter and uh, we are asked to form a triangle which has a maximum possible area so in that scenario remember one thing if there is a constraint of fixing the parameter the maximum area is always view of the equilateral triangle so how can this property be tested in actual exam for example if you are given that total parameter of a triangle is equal to for example 12 and quantity a is the area of triangle and quantity b is for example that is 30 so based on this question how can i compare the area of triangle with this 30 with the constraint of parameter 12 that is only possible if i can find in any way the maximum value of this area of triangle so that's why this property is very important that if i know the uh, constraint of that parameter is constant so the maximum area will always be of the equilateral triangle so if in the equilateral triangle our sides are equal so the length of one side will be uh, uh, divide this by 3 equal to 4 so we have a triangle where this is 4 this is 4 and this is 4 now what is the area there will be under root 3 by 4 into 4 square that will be 4 under root 3 now this thing is 4 under root 3 
and this thing is 30. Now you can straightforward compare that whether this 30 is greater than that or this is less than that. Okay. Now the next thing is that for a given area at, at first we are given a constraint of parameter now we are given a constraint of area that area is fixed you need to find a triangle with the minimum parameter and that will also the equilateral triangle so remember these two if we are given the constraint of fixed parameter the maximum area for triangles will be of the equilateral triangle and if we are given the constraint of fixed area in that scenario, the minimum parameter will be of the equilateral triangle. And remember, both of these are for the triangles. For the circles and for the quadrilaterals and polygons, there are some other special considerations. But for triangle, the only two main considerations are listed that for a fixed parameter, equilateral triangle has a maximum area, and for a fixed area, if the triangle has the minimum parameter.